Okay, for more on this, let's bring in former S Assistant FBI Director Chris Swecker. Chris, good to see you. I just want to follow up on that report. Mm -hmm. The more time goes by, the more we find out the FBI knew about this guy, authorities knew about this guy. I'm sure they get information on lots of people all the time, but what do you make of the fact that so much seems to have been known about Ruth? Well, yeah, well, we know he, you know, he had a lot of interactions with the local police. Uh, I'm, a, I'm in North Carolina. I was a former assistant DA before I went in the bureau. I know North Carolina well. I'm very surprised that he slipped through the cracks and didn't do any jail time for all those, those offenses that he committed, including a felony and a, and a standoff with uh, state uh, or local police department mm -hmm. when, when he was in possession of a machine gun. You know, it's not terribly unusual for the FBI to hear, get a report about a gun, a felon in possession or somebody in possession of a gun that shouldn't have one and pass it off to the local police department. They, they don't have the resources to work that kind of case. I'm surprised that he didn't pop up on the Secret Service radar when he advertised that Iran should assassinate mm -hmm. the president. Mm -hmm. They work every, you know, even discussions about assassinating the president. And how about traveling to Ukraine? He should have come up on the FBI's radar in a big way when he went there to try to bring uh, foreign fighters into the theater. So, Chris, that leads me to the next question, which is ultimately since July, since the other attempted assassination attempt on former President Trump, the bullet actually hitting him, that more care wasn't taken here. We're finding out that location was common for paparazzi. A lot of people knew that he liked to play golf there, yet they didn't sweep the perimeter. And so many people are asking the question at this point, is this basically just apathy on the part of the Secret Service with respect to former President Donald Trump because he is who he is? Yeah, I, I attributed the first incident to total apathy and, and indifference towards his protection. He certainly didn't have the A-team. They, they had very lackadaisical uh, planning and effort with state and locals, didn't communicate with them. In this instance, I mean, they upped their game a little bit, I think, because of the scrutiny that, that had come from the first incident and that probably saved Donald Trump's life. But they, they still don't seem to have it together. I mean, they, again, they got lucky. All it would have taken is just one agent walking down the fence line ahead of Trump. And they would have identified that guy and then probably captured him right there on the spot. In this case, he spotted, the agent probably spotted him from a distance and tried to shoot it out with a handgun, which is not good at a, at a long distance. And this guy got away. It was only lucky that we got him you know, 50 miles away mm. with the license plate readers. Can I? But I, you know, they just haven't, they just haven't upped their game. And I, I don't know whether it's still apathy. I don't think they can get away with that now. I think they have to apply the resources. Can I ask you more about that? Because the golfing event was off the record. So should there not have still been a, a more thorough sweep, though, the one that you just described? Sure. Yeah, when I heard the Secret Service director say that, oh, it's a off the record movement or unplanned movement, they knew about it because they had the detail with him. They can muster up the resources as quickly as they need to. So I don't put any any stock in that that uh, deflection, if you will, that it was an unplanned movement. Certainly they had the resources. This is not rocket science. It really isn't. The only place a threat would have come from is, is the tree line, the fence line. Right. They, nobody's going to be hiding in a sand trap. Nobody's going to be hiding on the golf course in plain view. They're going to be coming from an area of concealment like where he came from. But, he, you know, the fact that he was there for 12 hours is, is pretty, you know, pretty egregious. Chris, real quick, uh, you've mentioned resources many times. Yesterday, President Biden said Secret Service doesn't have enough resources. Is this a resource problem? Do these guys need more money or do they need to change who they report to? But, but tell me how you fix this, because you said they didn't up their game. Right. How they can up their game? Yeah, it is not a resource problem. I, I dealt with this as the head of the FBI's criminal division, interacting with the head of Secret Service after 9-11 when we had to reprogram resources and the Secret Service wanted to move aggressively into financial crimes of every type, variety. Uh -huh. Bank fraud, you know, they're already doing credit card fraud. They want to do health care fraud. They want to do insurance fraud. It's more fun to do fraud and, and financial crimes investigations than it is to do protection. Hmm. So they started diverting their agents over to do investigations of things that the FBI could could have been doing, mm. um, but for 9/11, and you know that was a temporary situation. So they moved into that area, and they diverted, diverted at least half their resources over into financial crimes. Well, their primary mission, unlike the FBI, is protection right. of of these you know these dignitaries and the president and the vice president, et cetera. 
that is their core mission. But if you look at their budget for 2023, about 40% of their resources were devoted to protection. So now they're using this as a play for resources. I think that's a deflection in itself that, gee, we don't have the resources. They that, shouldn't be rewarded for right. doing what they did with more resources. That, that is a fascinating point, uh, Chris Swecker. Thank you for bringing your perspective today. We appreciate it. You bet. Thank you.